we have to start by looking at a place to drill a hole into the building. And we're looking for a reference point. So we're going to start by looking in the basement to where the brick meets this old block and see if that's a good spot to drill. We saw the brick and the block outside. And when I look right here, it's perfect. I can drill right here and there's nothing in the way. If I didn't have that, I'd have to look for some other reference point, a pipe or a conduit or a wire. We're good to go. Let's go drill that. Now this trim piece is about seven inches and I'd like that faucet to be right in the center. So if I mark it at three and a half up, there's our spot to drill. All right, now it's time to drill the correct size hole. For that, we're using an inch and three eighths self-feeding wood bit right here. And I also need an extension because we have to go through a fair amount of wood here. All right, so there's a perfect hole right where we want it to be. Great. Well, that's great, but where are we getting the water from? Well, I'm going to actually tie into that original faucet on the other side of the building right here. So we're going to come from this point, run underneath the bottom of these joists right here, attach it right to the side of this beam. And once we get to this point, I'm going to dive under the beam, and I'm going to tie right into here. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. Now, we've got to be sure the water's off, and that's the perfect place to cut. And I like to clean the pipe before I cut it because once I cut it, there could be a little bit of water that gets all over the emery cloth. And it does a better job cleaning it. And I'm going to cut it with a tubing cutter. I can use a full size one here because I have enough space to spin it around. Nope. Oh, there, there we go. Good. All right, I'm running this horizontal line and I'm tying them into these bell hangers. These are copper hangers. And there was a clip, and we just snug them up. Now, as I run the water line back towards the water supply, I'm right up against this beam. And I could just drill through the beam itself, but I wouldn't want to do that. You don't want to drill through the bottom third of any beam. You don't want to lose structure. So I'm going to pop down underneath that beam and then pop back up. And any time you do that, that creates a trap. Should I ever want to turn the water off or winterize the house, I put in a little drain valve right there so that water can drain out. Now we're ready to flux it and solder it and we're ready to go. It's important to clean and to flux both the pipe and the fitting to ensure we have a good soldered connection. When I solder, I apply heat to one side of the fitting, wait for the flux to bubble, and then apply the solder to the opposing side. And the key is not to overheat the fitting. I always like to wipe the joints when I'm finished. All right, now it's time to install our frost-proof silcock. I'm just going to remove the handle, then make it a little bit easier to install a couple of screws. And I want to have a tight seal on this hole, so I'm going to use a little bit of plumber's putty to just fill that back side of the hole. Now, when I do that, it'll all squish out. And David, just reach in here and hold that in place. Yep. And I'm going to attach it into the building with a couple of exterior grade screws. Now we make our final solder connections. This is the elbow that connects to the silcock outside. All right, Dave, we got some water out back here for all the plants. That's great, Richard. Mm -hmm.